Hello Sustainable Growers, today we have the chance to visit a couple that is very, very inspiring. They built an aquaponic setup at a quite large scale and inside this uh, big aquaponic setup they use different systems. So they are using uh, raft tanks, they are using NFT, they are using a uh, flood and drain grow bed and they even have some uh, vertical towers. So it's really an all-in-one uh, aquaponics uh, system. It's inside a nice greenhouse and uh, it's a 25,000 liters uh, setup. But before, please give a like to the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you want to build your own aquaponic setup, don't forget that you can get access to the free guide, which is a six step guide to help you to build and manage your own aquaponic setup in the best conditions. Today I am with Clive and we are visiting his amazing aquaponic setup. So Clive, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us uh, what you are doing here, what type of aquaponic setup you have? Uh, yes, um, we're, we're running a 25,000 litre system. Um, we run uh, flood and drain bed, deep water culture or uh, raft beds, and we're running some vertical and horizontal pipes. Um, it's really just a project in retirement so that we can grow some of our own food. Right, amazing. And what kind of food? Uh, because I know that you are a bit specialized in strawberries at the moment. Yes. So what is your plan? You want to grow a large variety of different plants or do you want to grow one specific crop? Um, what is the idea? Yeah, we really want to grow a mix. Um, it's a lot easier for pest management if you've got a variety of different plants. Um, so, yeah, we're, we'll still have an emphasis on strawberries, but our goal is to actually have a mix of food and to have a mix of plants. Yeah. And would you like to let us know how many kilo of uh, strawberries you harvested last season? Yeah, last year we got 200 kilo of strawberries. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So here I had some problem uh, with the sound. So you know that with the sound, the noise of the water running around, uh, we couldn't really hear what uh, Clive and I uh, were saying so I just thought I'm gonna just record a little uh, voice on top of this video to explain you what Clive is uh, telling us. So he is presenting uh, the different fish tanks so he's got four fish tanks of 3000 meters each and uh, he's got 750 silver perch in those uh, in those four fish tanks which means just a little bit less than 200 fish per tank. The fish tanks are equipped with an evacuation on the bottom, which means that all the solids, um, all the fish poo is going to be sucked by the, by the pipe on the bottom of the fish tank. And uh, it's going to go into a really big tank where basically uh, the solids are going to fall down and the water is going to raise to the filtration, to the biological filtration. So we were going to see it in detail, but uh, here what is important to say that uh, Clive equipped the system with two different pumps, two different water pumps, which means that if there is a power breakage, you know, a problem into the, into the source of power, uh, you still have always one pump that is going to work because it's got like three circuit breaker. So the pumps are on different systems, different circuits. So even if there is a problem on one circuit breaker, one of the pump is going to still run. So the fish have always access to a water that is uh, purified and uh, that is filtered. Uh, so in this, in this way, uh, Clive really um, avoid any possible problem we could have uh, by having a pump that just uh, stop working and then you have all your fish uh, that die. All the fish tanks are equipped with um, a supply of air as well, uh, a very strong aeration and uh, this is supplied from different pumps as well. So if something happens, all the fish tanks, they still have air and they still have uh, filtration. Clive also used the air pump uh, to make some little air lifts into each of the fish tanks. So it increased the little filtration in the fish tanks and also it increased the movement of water into the fish tank. All the fish tanks are equipped with some leads, which allow Clive to basically um, close the lids when you want to reduce the quantity of light going into the fish tanks 
and therefore it can manage the quantity of algae that are growing into the fish tank. So it can avoid any algae growth by uh, maintaining the, the, the lid closed. Uh, it also avoids the fish, uh, such as the trout, to jump away from the fish tank and to basically die on the floor. So having a lid on your fish tank is something that uh, I really recommend. Uh, it's something that, that I put on all my aquaponics setup and uh, that can be very useful. Also, if you got some kids that are playing around, it avoids them to just uh, try to see the fish and fall in the fish tank and not being able to uh, just uh, come away from the fish tank. So having leads can be uh, a safety uh, as well for the kids. After the fish tank, the water is going to fall by gravity into this very high tank. And here are the heavy particles are going to fall down and they're going to sediment on the bottom of the tank while the clear water is going to be able to go to the next step. The next step is going to be the biological filtration. So this tank here is basically a mechanical filter. One of the first parts we have is a filter bag. So that's just to capture some of the early solids. Um, I change that over once every couple of weeks. We then have brush filters. So the brush filters are simply gutter guard, so that can actually be taken out and uh, cleaned if needed. Ironically, we haven't had to clean it for 12 months, so oh, right. it's quite a good... Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically you capture most of the sodium tank to the bag? Or? Well, really it's a sediment tank first, yeah. and then, then the bag. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then we just got these brush filters up there. So this water that is coming here? This coming directly from the fish tank or where is it coming from? Uh, the, we have at the bottom of each of the fish tanks we actually have a pipe that go to a settlement tank yeah. and then we have water from the settlement tank coming into these yeah. filters. Yeah. But there is an overflow on each of the tanks and that will actually come directly through this. Okay. Yeah. Normally it's not you. That's why right. not yeah. Uh, yeah, probably there is a little bit that comes through. Probably 10% of the water okay. would come through that anyway. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mainly because of the flow rate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's the first part of the filter. Then we have some uh, aquaculture material. So this is really just to provide surface area for additional uh, bacteria to grow on. Okay. So you don't have any sedimentation here? Really? You don't have any sedimentation on the well, I haven't looked. <laughs> but the system, yeah. You don't uh, blow any, you don't blow any air. Uh, you don't have Each any of these tanks have air oh, running through it. Yeah. 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 And then we've got more con conventional biomaterial the last two. Yeah, okay. yeah, so the last two tanks um, has the biomaterial or biomedia and aeration. So there's two IBCs which really just run the biomedia. So there's four tank, four IBC containers in total which actually run our filtration system. Yes. And so I think the size of the filtration system, as I said, it's 25,000 litres of water in the system. But I think the size of the filtration system is the reason why our system is very stable. pH tends to remain around seven. Yes, how many kilo of fish have you got? Um, I'm not totally sure on the kilo, there's 750 silver perch. Yes. So you'd have to say with a mix of sizes, maybe 300 kilo. Okay, yeah. It's a fair bit of fish. But uh, when we look, your filtration, yes, is huge. Yeah. So just about those ones. Uh, so those ones, they are plastic pearls. Huh? And yeah, they are. A mix. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got a mix of different yeah. plastic pearls, a different support yeah. of uh, yeah. biofilter. Uh, and so the idea is to have the bacteria that are living on top of them. So that's also very much used in uh, recirculated systems, uh, especially in aquaculture. And uh, they are normally auto-cleaned. So uh, here Clive is blowing some air inside the setup and the pearls are moving and they clean themselves. So you got some bacteria that are living on top, but uh, it's auto-cleaned. So normally Clive, you don't have to do anything on this system. No. It's cleaning by itself.
So the water is going from one tank to the other? Yes, it is. There's, there's actually two 90 mil pipes from each IBC to each other. Yeah. And so how do you avoid those spurs to go into the next step? You got a mesh? Uh, yes, yeah, we do. Um, there's actually a cap. Yeah. Uh, I can't take one off. No, 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 that's so, okay. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. basically a cap to stand the steel wire. Okay. Um, and then, and uh, are you sure that the wire is not affecting the quality of the water? You don't have, because personally, I try yeah. always to, to keep all metals away from the setup. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of that? Well, it's pretty insignificant, relevant to the size of the system. Yeah. And okay. We haven't had any problems. So. Yeah. Okay. At the end, you got a lot of different tanks there, that we can see. Yeah, basically we've got four IBCs and they're linked together, so it's effectively one tank of 4,000 litres, which is a sump tank. And we run two pumps on there. Uh, one pump goes up to the deep water culture, or well, to the grow beds, and uh, that recirculates back via the drainage system to the four fish tanks. Uh, we run four 3,000 litre fish tanks, and then there's a uh, second pump that actually pumps just directly to the fish tanks. Okay. So our throughput per, per fish tank is about four and a half thousand litres per hour. So best practice I understand is in a three thousand litre tank you want three thousand litres of water per hour. So we're running about four and a half. That's great. So uh, I imagine the sump tank here is kind of the lowest part. I mean all the water is going there by gravity. From the filtration, at least, it's going back there by gravity. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, behind us, we got uh, some protein raft or deep water culture. Yes. Yeah. So, so, the gutter here, uh, you were telling me uh, at the beginning of, um, of this visit that yeah. you can introduce some water thanks to this little pipe inside the gutter. That's right. And then the water at the end of the gutter is going back in your system. Yeah, back into the system. So the purpose of that is um, when we want to really push growth. Uh, it's, you know, it's winter now, but when we really want to push growth, it allows us to grow seedlings on the edge of the grow beds and not take up the real estate for the growing area. Uh, that's good. So you maximize the growth in your, uh, in your raft system. And this one is really to start the seedlings. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And so. Yeah. Basically, we can call it um, uh, an NFT system, uh, a nutrient field technique system. Yes. You just have a bit of water that is running underneath, and it helps uh, the little seedlings to develop some nice roots. So then they are ready to be transferred into the raft. That's right. Yeah. In, in spring or summer, we typically grow a lettuce out in about four weeks. So it allows them to spend a week on the on the gutter system prior to going into the main beds. Yeah, yeah four weeks to produce yeah. uh, to produce your plants to, ready to that's right yeah. to harvest it. Yeah. Wow. For yeah. for lettuce. For lettuce, yeah. Okay. And then you got other varieties. Uh, I saw we saw just there on the corner you got some cabbage as well. You got some silver beets. So you got different uh, times of uh, rotation, right? Some some plants are taking a bit longer than others. That's great. Yeah. So how do you manage it? Do you plant one raft with the same spaces or then you have to move the plants from the hole from hole to hole because i imagine some plants you're going to harvest them before the others that's correct well with lettuce um, we normally harvest leaves at a time so we yes yeah so it's uh, a little yeah, bit yeah. different yeah yeah that's good yeah. so you can push them you can continue yeah. to harvest for months probably uh, maybe not months yeah no, i wouldn't say months yeah yeah, yeah few weeks yeah. right yeah. yeah that's good you told us that uh, the polystyrene um, raft that you are using at the moment they are the second version you try that's correct yeah so the first version you had some uh, little difficulties some algae growing on top of them right yeah okay so th this is a raft material we started off with um, and you know we just brought it from a foam supply and drilled the holes in it where the current foam that we're just putting into the system um, is actually preformed. Yeah. yeah. So um, this one was a bit more rough and you had imagine I imagine all the pearls that were floating in the system as well. The pearls yes. of uh, polystyrene. Yes.
So Clive, uh, here we got uh, the NFT system. The, the, pipe, the pipes are hanging on this metal structure. Yes. And we got yeah. some water going through. Yep. And you use it for what kind of crop? Uh, we primarily use the overhead pipes for strawberries. Yes, um, <laughs> against strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the plus with it is it's, uh, the strawberries just hang down. Um, again, it's winter because it's not the time that you would normally grow strawberries. Uh, but typically in summer, the strawberries hang down, it makes it easy to pick and yeah. So the water that, that is coming here is coming directly from uh, the fish tank? Uh, from, from the, the sump tank. For the sump tank? Yeah. So this water here has been filtered and then, I mean, uh, filtered through your filtration and then goes into the sump tank. Great. And then it's coming here along those pipes. And That's right. We, we basically can adjust the flow rate on the switch. Yeah. And so and how do you determine the quantity of water that you want to have in your pipes, the, the water come in? It's really not that scientific. Yeah. Basically, we, we set it with an amount that doesn't overflow. And yeah, we find with the strawberries, one of the things you need to do, because it's in a greenhouse and you get a lot of growth, um, we periodically go through and trim the leaves back uh, to help in uh, fruit production. Uh, but we also trim the roots. You because, trim the roots. Yeah, we trim the roots. So, so. you take uh, you take the pot away. Yeah, we'll take the pot out. We'll, we'll uh, trim the the leaves, and then we'll trim the roots, and we'll put the pot in. And within a week or so, we'll be back to growing strawberries. So, yeah. Okay. So yeah. so you see the, the action of uh, trimming the the plants. You see directly the action on the fructification on the on the production of. Uh, trimming of the leaves will mean the plant puts energy back into the fruit. Trimming the roots prevents a blockage. Ah, uh, yes. So, <laughs> so you don't have water if overflowing. You don't, if you don't trim, you're going to have uh, a you block. You will have water overflowing. You will block it. Yeah. Okay. Which isn't a problem if you have a deep water culture bed underneath. Or yeah. Something to catch yeah. the water. You recycle it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you need to do that in this system. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, really, the, the quantity of water that you let go, it's not so important. You just want to make sure it circulates. Yes. But you don't need to have a, a specific flow of water. Well, just, uh, no, I don't think you, yeah, you, haven't found you may that. need to, but we don't. We, we basically just have water running through yeah. um, and we keep it simple and it works. Yeah. yeah. And so you don't have any problem of high temperature of uh, water inside the pipes in summer. It, the, the temperature of the water inside doesn't really increase. We, we haven't. Yeah. You haven't yeah. found the any straw problem. Yeah, we're, we've been very lucky with the strawberries. We've had a lot of growth and yeah. Okay. And have you found any uh, difference in the growth of the first one in the row and the last ones? Like, let's say, you know, you have a, f uh, a very, um, how to say, a very Rich. low flow rate. Yeah. And maybe the first one will take all the nutrients, they will grow well. And the last one, they wouldn't have less nutrients. No, you we haven't, find no, that. haven't so had a problem. So you probably yeah. got enough water coming anyway. So you yes. You could even reduce it wouldn't affect probably yeah. the, the growth that's really good um, and in terms of weight because uh, here you got very low uh, quantity of water inside the pipes right so uh, the structure is not very heavy no well we basically support it in three places yeah that's um, what i see and that's and we that's don't been okay and we yeah. don't see any curve on the pipe so no. it's a it's a kind of structure that can be put anywhere for for yeah. bees. There is no, yeah. there is no wet problems. Yeah. Like at the moment, we're installing these new beds, so we've taken pipes out to make a walkway. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah. What happened if you got uh, some roots that are clogged into the system? Are you able to clean the system from one side or the other? Yeah, this you one, can. You it? can take the caps off if you need to. Ah, you can. We haven't it. had a problem. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to clean it, you can take this one off and push something through from one, one hole. You can push something through to just push all the roots here and remove everything. If, if, if you, you need it to. If you yeah. need to. Yeah. I think that's very important in the design. I think that the key is the roots become part of the biomass. And yeah. Yeah, that's sort of how the system works. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And that's also a really good support for the bacteria that could grow yeah. the roots with all the ramifications. And that's exactly what we got in the in the raft system as well. Yeah. So thank you so much, Clive. It's uh, really good, very ins inspiring. But in the future, don't you want to try to have a bit more biodiversity here as well? Like uh, uh, probably not so much no? in these towers. Okay. We're, we're growing mint 
in a couple of of them. Yeah. And that's really just to contain the mint. Oh yes. Uh, where we really want the biodiversity is in the beds, so okay. that we attract the right amount of predators to deal with the pests. So. Yeah. So you don't have any any pests on the strawberries. You don't have any problem with it. Um, no, not really. I, I think the we've had the odd in the gravel grow beds. We've had the odd issue with slugs. Yes. On a few occasions. Yeah. Um, but from a strawberry viewpoint, that's that that's. That's about it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Because yeah. imagine if you had lettuce everywhere, would there, would be another story, right? So the aphids could just jump from one to the other, and then you would have to maybe mix it a bit, you know, yes. in terms of yeah. biodiversity. Yeah. But here, because we are in strawberries, you don't have so many pests or so a specific pest that is going to spread around. So you, it allows you to go for all strawberries. Yes. Yeah. Which is great, amazing. And here we can see that you are growing some other types of plants. So that's in this idea to have a lot of biodiversity, a lot of different area for the different predators to grow to grow on, right? That's correct. Yeah. 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 The idea is to have a mix of plants so you have flowers that attract the right sort of predators. Yes. And um, it's called scent masking or shape masking. So uh, the pred the pests get a little confused if it's the the different smells, and it helps minimise the amount of pest control you need to do exactly because obviously with the fish you can't you can't treat you, you can't you, use you can't chemicals. spray anything yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's probably the key when you go because here it's kind of it's not a huge scale but it's still a very interesting aquaponic setup with all the different setups you have so in this greenhouse we got a lot of different veggies uh, but we got a lot of strawberries everywhere and I imagine if you didn't work with biodiversity if you had lettuce everywhere you would have massive issues trying to control the number of aphids. Absolutely. Yeah. While now you are really into this uh, mindset where you try to mix the spaces and working with the dynamic of nature, having predators ready to act if uh, a pest come around. Absolutely. Like if you're going to use ladybirds or lace wings, you, well, you need some food for them. So you do need some aphids, but you also need to create the right environment that they like to live in. Correct. So it's about creating the right sort of eco environment yeah. yes so you see different creatures around when you work you see like uh, uh, different types of insect and you really see the biodiversity right when you work in this environment we're getting there like we're, we're basically um this system's probably about 18 months old yeah and we're going through a fairly steep learning curve um and we're spending a lot of time learning about how to produce food successfully yeah um and you know, we're going through the process now of creating that biodiversity so that we get the right sort of result. Amazing. And yeah. in terms of nutrients, so obviously uh, you feed your fish, so that's the general principle of aquaponics and you got the nitrogen that is coming, but are you adding any type of minerals, uh, specific iron in your, in your system to maintain the vegetables in good health and to avoid any deficiencies? Uh, we haven't had to add a lot. We've added a little bit of uh, chelated iron. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because we've got such a large biofilter, yeah. uh, we haven't had to add a lot at all. Uh, we've added a little bit of worm juice from the compost worms. Um, it probably helps a lot. Yeah. Because in the worm juice, yeah. the worms are basically eating all the, the food waste. So you got yeah. all those minerals that are released into the worm juice. So when you add it into your aquaponic setup, that's a big uh, input or intake of, uh, of minerals for all yeah. your plants. Yeah. yeah. Um, this area is our flood and drain beds. So we run scoria as a medium. That's a 20 to 30 millimeter scoria. Um, principally in these beds we've ran strawberries but we're now uh, running some uh, brassicas and um, just a mix of other vegetables yeah really good i see you got a bit of blue stone with it which is uh which is not a problem yeah. because it, uh, it doesn't affect yeah. really good uh, and yeah so we are now in may in australia yes so the temperature has started to cool down a bit well we still we, we see that you still have a good production of strawberries still have a lot of fruits, some of them are uh, green, some of them are a bit red already. Uh, it's very interesting to see how you can, uh, you can 
expand yeah. the season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got some strawberries in my setup and they are gone now. You know, I don't have any, any flowers anymore because the setup is outside. Yes. But here you kind of really extend the season thanks to this greenhouse. It's really interesting to see. So congratulations. <laughs> okay, thank you. So in this area here is where we're growing the brassicas um, and some parsley. And you got some cabbage on the side. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah so this is the area where we do propagation. So uh, we just have a tray for growing out the seedlings in the greenhouse. And uh, just to my left here is the table that we use for uh, planting out all the seedlings. Typically we'll put, um, with the smaller seedlings we, we grow in soil, then we'll separate them out and put them into a cup or net pot with perlite, um, where there's some plants will actually just plant straight into the seed straight into the perlite and actually put it into that system. Basically we wanted to work out a way to add some more minerals to the system and we wanted to experiment with sand as a filter medium. So we've built these additional sand beds. So they're probably not even a wicking pot, are they? They're, it's basically just a, a bed full of sand. And we've got some bananas growing. Um, it's in Melbourne, so it's unique to grow bananas, but it is in a greenhouse. And the bananas are sitting above in a pot. So they've got the soil around them in the actual pot. And the bed really just has sand in it. So once a week we run water through that and we flood it and then that just provides an opportunity for um, the sand to be filtered by that um, and we're just adding an earthworm bed to that as well. So it's really just looking at different ways to actually uh, keep the water clean and mimic nature to some extent and um, yeah, just to add some more minerals to the system. Yeah. So what type of sand have you have you uh, have you got here? Is it a specific sand? It's or? called triple washed sand. Triple washed. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't know whether it's, I, I, it's probably river sand. When you push your water through this sand band, yeah. you can you don't see any fluctuation in the pH. You don't see a raise of pH. No, so we don't. So um, there is probably not much limestone inside. No, we, we use um, a device called uh, the Senai device, which is a, a probe that goes into the water. So that gives us a pH reading. I think it's every five or ten minutes it takes a reading. Okay. So we actually get a graph oh, okay, yes. over a period of time. And that also measures nitrogen. Um, it does a calculation to estimate oxygen level. Uh, but what it does do is give you a pH, nitrogen, N3 level. Yep. Um, pH and temperature. So we can just go back and track that. And it, it makes it a lot easier to manage the system. Oh yeah, definitely. When we first had the system, we used to measure it every day with a yep. um, test aquarium kit. kit or yep. test kit. And as you become more comfortable with the system over the time, we probably do that once a month now. And, yeah. You know, when we do nitrate, it's normally quite high. Okay. Um, but we find that pH is very stable. That's interesting to see that you got nitrates that are high with all the vegetables that you are growing. Yeah. That's uh, it, It's interesting, really. like. When we first looked at uh, doing the aquaponics, we were calculating the amount of food that you were putting in and trying to work out how you get the maximum amount of food in. Um, you know, maybe try to get a large amount of food in and have the fish to do that to power the system. But we found that we get very, very high nitrate levels without a lot of food going in. Yeah. And I think it's really the quality of the conversion. And I think it really gets down to the fact that we've just built a beautiful home for bacteria. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And also you got you use also as a worm uh, worm tea? Uh, we added uh, worm tea every so often. We've only just done that recently. Oh, okay. And we've had absolutely no problem with growth for the vegetables um, prior to that. Okay. Um, but again, we're just trying to work out ways of just you know, mimicking nature. Yeah. Um, so you said that the nitrate is increasing, I mean, it's, it's quite high. So how high it is and how do you manage it? How do you avoid it to, to be too high? Uh, 
typically it would be around 80 parts per minute. So, okay. so it is, yeah. Yeah, it's quite high. It's a strong amount. Yeah. Um, and we haven't done anything to manage it. Okay. You know, um, the system, you know, because I see that uh, you got some very nice weekend beds. You got a, a full setup with weekend beds behind you. Yeah. So that's something you could do to use this water from sometimes to time. Use your water from the setup to water your weekend bed. In this case, you would use all the nitrate for your weekend beds. And then, because you lower your, your water level here, you, you would replace it. you replace it. So it dilutes uh, the nitrogen level. I mean the nitrate level. Yeah. So it's it's an option to recycle it. Yeah. Uh, here we are in your weeping bed area. Yeah, well, well this is uh, our non-aquaponic system. So these are wicking beds, which are effectively self-watering pots. Um, we've done these twice. <laughs> when we first built them, we made a couple of mistakes. We uh, didn't ensure that the sand in the bottom of the wicking pots were well above the highest water level. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, it's important that when you build a wicking pot, that um, you have sand in the bottom, or the method that we use, you, you need to have sand in the bottom, and it's important that the potting mix is well above that uh, water level. So yeah. um, you need at least 30 millimeters of sand above your highest water level. Yeah. The other thing that's pretty important in wicking pots is that you have good drainage. When we first built these, uh, we had a one inch or a 25 millimeter drain hole and we found that that wasn't enough to actually drain it properly. So now what we use is 90 millimeter uh, pipe and we have caps like this on the top and on the outlet to prevent mosquitoes. Do you breed this cap by yourself? Do you glue it? Uh, no, you can buy these you buy them at with a the local metal. hardware store. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so with a uh, growing medium, uh, we have a mix of um, just potting mix or compost um, we mix about 10% by volume of perlite, yes. just to lighten up the mix. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically what we do. So, yeah. 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 so you know, from a construction viewpoint, in the bottom of an IBC container, we run ag pipe, uh, a circle of ag pipe. We put gravel around the outside of that. We then cover that with geofabric. You then fill that with sand, and then you put your potting mix above that. Yeah. And then, okay. yeah. So, so we water them, uh, basically when we plant seedlings, for a small period of time we'll water from the top. Yes. Or if it's an extremely hot day, we'll give it a little bit of water from the top. Yeah. But other than that, it just gains water from the bottom. Okay, yeah. yeah. Clive, thank you so much for your time. It was uh, such a pleasure to visit you and uh, to see your amazing setup. Uh, we wish you the best and uh, we know that you're going to continue and you're going to produce amazing food here. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to see you again and we're going to make other videos when uh, the crop is uh, a bit more developed in your in your grow bed, in your um, raft systems. Uh, so thank you very much and uh, all the best to you. Okay, thank you. Leslie and Clive, thank you again for the visit. Uh, it was very, very inspiring. Uh, you are a very interesting uh, couple and uh, really it's a the kind of setup that you have here uh, is really, really well designed. Uh, I can just congratulate you. Uh, I have just a few feedback for the filtration. I think you can increase the quantity of air uh, going into the, the biological filters and especially uh, the purse uh, biological filter because uh, the plastic pearls need to be always in movement. Otherwise, they're going to build up with organic matters. So um, that's something that I would do. I would increase the quantity of air in this case, they're going to move, and when they move, basically, uh, the shock between the pearls allow all the organic matters to be removed and uh, basically to go away. So that's the, the main improvement I see. Also, in your NFT system, I think the diameter of the pipe is a bit limited. I would have used a bigger pipes uh, just to allow the vegetable to grow a bit more and to develop some nice roots without clogging uh, the pipe. Otherwise, really, really well designed. Uh, the filtration is a bit oversized, but anyway, it will allow you to put a bit more fish in the future because you got some really interesting fish tanks. So uh, congratulations, really. Uh, it really inspired me and uh, I imagine it's going to inspire a lot of people. 
uh, who wish to retire in a quiet place away from the city and to build their aquaponics setup and to grow their own food and to become self-sufficient. So congratulations to you again, we wish you the very best and we're gonna keep in touch. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, it really helps us, Melbourne Aquaponics channel, to grow. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you are interested into aquaponics and if you want to build your own aquaponics setup, I offer you uh, the six step uh, guide, which is really a guide that is going to help you to build your own aquaponics setup and to manage it in the best conditions. So uh, you can find this guide in the description of the video just below. Or uh, if you look uh, in the corner of the video, you're going to see an eye like information. If you click on the eye, you will be able also to, to access to this guide. So uh, thank you again for watching the video and see you in the next one. Bye bye.